Belize may be a long way away from a referendum on the International Court of Justice being the final forum for a settlement of the outstanding claim to its territory. But the government knows that it has no time to lose and enemies on its tail. Minister of Foreign Affairs Wilfred Eldrington announced a major escalation of the government's plans to educate the people of Belize in the coming months from ABC to UB about why Belize must stay Belize. The day before yesterday, we, the unit went, I went along with the unit and we addressed the six farm students, junior college students in Sacred Heart College and, um, and the teachers there. Um, at that point in time, um, at, at that meeting, the head of the unit, Ambassador Leslie, informed them that we had already formulated a curriculum prepared by Mayor Humphreys in Dangriga, who is a renowned historian, Belizean historian, a uh, uh, curriculum for the teaching of the issue in the secondary schools, and it may be expanded with respect to that. Um, we are, have been working very assiduously on the organizing of debates at every level in the society with secondary schools, um, six forms, universities, and that is going to be, we're going to be assisted in that regard by the Social Security Board, which has experience in promoting these issues. We have arrived at a decision that we want to do an infomercial a comprehensive infomercial, nicely put together, so that we can put it on the media. We are also exploring the possibility of having these mobile type cinema units where we can go into every village and in fact show them visually what the situation is. We are also thinking in terms of um, interpreting or translating the present information which we have into Garifuna, Maya, Spanish, and disseminating it. So there are lots of things being worked on as we speak. The government says Eldrington will not be faced by the recent document that talks about contracting plans to produce maps of Guatemala with Belize included. It is not anything which they are advising that we need to take any position on at this point in time. It doesn't seem to be anything official and that it is prejudicial to us. But we are going to keep an eye on it. I mean, not everything that the Guatemalans do in relation to Belize or say in relation to Belize, we get all fired about. But we ensure that we get all the details on it, and that's what they're doing. And if there's any need for us to take any action, send a protest note or anything like that, we will do that once we think that that is a prudent case. Do you agree that any legal claim of Guatemala against Belize relating to land and insular territories and to any maritime areas pertaining to these territories should be submitted to the International Court of Justice for final settlement and that it determines finally the boundaries of the respective territories and areas of the parties? That is the question that we will all be asked to answer at a time of the government's choosing. But the nominal inclusion of all 8,867 square miles of Belizean land and adjoining sea is no guarantee that Guatemala gets a blade of grass if both countries go to the ICJ, the foreign minister assured. The, the question that was formulated was formulated jointly with the Guatemalans. In other words, the Belize ambassador got together, the Guatemalan ambassador got together. That question was formulated in that way. They signed off on it, we signed off on it, after it had been signed off by their lawyers and our lawyers. So that is the official claim. Nothing and else is official except that. And that cannot be changed at all unless both come together and... Oh, it could, it, it could always be changed. Anything that is agreed upon can be changed, but it will have to be agreed between all of us. It can't be unilateral. We have to agree to it together. The only reason why it was formulated in that way was to ensure that the Guatemalans can't come back later on and say, boy, we never discussed this part of it and this was not adjudicated on. So let us go back to court. We don't want that. We want to go one time and end the matter there. But, okay, so mm -hmm. to someone who does not know or clarify it for us, once it goes to the court, based on that question, what can Belize stand to lose? Someone would um, say everything if you're saying all of Belize in the question. No, no, because they, the Guatemalan, have to prove that they won't believe. 
But you will know as well as I do that we have always been here. They have signed agreements saying that this is ours, 1859-1931. We have always had domination and control over this, 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 this territory. So that the likelihood of losing it is really not a realistic poss possibil uh, possibility. Finally, the Guatemalans continue to drag their feet on establishing the SARS-2 protocol. We had raised it maybe a week or two before when we had a meeting in a, a meeting of the anniversary of the signing of the Telal Telalco agreement in Mexico. So there was no need for us to raise it again. And what was the outcome of that discussion? Um, you appreciate that because of the difficult situation we had over the killing of the kid, we could not move as fast as we wanted to move on it, but it's something that we knew have to be dealt with in some time. In some time, because if there's one thing we know, it is that there's going to be incidents, if not accidents. And it is only common sense for us to have a protocol to deal with those difficult times. So that is basically what we're trying to arrive at. We have had some reversals, but we can't give up on the idea. And so, but they have their own constraints. Aaron Humes reporting for News 5.